Thanks for staying with us here on Sunrise. This is CVM TV. Welcome back to Sunrise and the Hugh Winst Winter Institute for Reproductive Health Care and Endoscopic Surgery at the University of the West Indies is pleased to announce its upcoming roundtable talk to address the challenges of infertility and to explore strategies for ensuring a sustainable population. The director, obstetrician and fertility specialist, Dr. John Harriet, is here today to tell us more about mm -hmm. it. Good Doc, morning, welcome. Doc. How are you? Thank you, Dennis mm. and Karin. Thanks for having me on CVM Sunrise. Mm. Lovely. Um, well, very important topic. A very important, very topic. important yes. and a very topic important roundtable. For yeah. all of Jamaicans mm -hmm. in general, it's our collective responsibility to see that we have a replacement population to keep, mm -hmm. keep the economy going. Mm -hmm as well as to ensure that we preserve family life and right. future generations. Right, Indeed. Right. And what is that, re that magic number, the replacement okay. level number? So what our demographers um, measure, our epidemiologists, are certain statistical parameters, that, which is called a total fertility rate, mm -hmm. yeah. which is actually an estimated average number of children that a woman is expected to have throughout our lifetime. Yes. yes. So we are coming from the 70s where it was 4.5 to now we are at a replacement level of 1.9. Mm -hmm. The thing is that for us to replace the population, that chosen figure is 2.1. Okay. So we are below uh, currently replacement level mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fertility rates. Uh, the, the truth though is that some, well, I would imagine that women across the country are having less children than in the 70s. But is it that some women are, have, are choosing not to have any, or more women or more people are choosing not to have any, and others are choosing to have fewer, which is contributing to us being at 1.9? Precisely the point. But here's where the impact comes, what is peculiar to us as a Jamaican nation. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, the fall in birth rates tend to lag the fertility rate. And the reason behind mm. this is that for somebody to be considered as part of a total fertility rate, mm -hmm. you have to get to reproductive age, which is age 15 years. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's being born today is 15 years from now that you are now numbered among the fertility rate. Mm -hmm. Right. So it means, therefore, you can have growth or increased population growth mm -hmm. despite a low fertility rate. Yes. What we are seeing in Jamaica is the reverse. Mm -hmm. Our birth rates have been trending down over the last 24 years because of very effective public mm -hmm. campaigns Family planning. from mm -hmm. uh, two mm -hmm. than too many. many. Yes, yeah. yes. It has worked very well, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? So I'm not here to cause anxiety or fear mongering among our Jamaican women or men, mm -hmm. but just to recognize that we have a responsibility to protect humanity. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need to ensure that come 50 years from now or by the end of the century, where it's now estimated that the total fertility rate worldwide will fall even further to 1.6. Mm -hmm. There are countries like China and Japan, where this is, and South Korea, where this is becoming a serious problem. Because what happened is that in China, they had a one yes, child policy yes, yes. and yes. basically eliminated all the females. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. So now they have a lot of males who have no wives. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let me right? ask you, though, Doc, because we talk oftentimes when we talk about infertility or fertility issues, the focus is normally on the woman. How are our males factoring in this? Because I can imagine, too, that. I know woman alone are the problem, you know, Doc. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of them and them not yeah. properly, yeah. you know. Lifestyle issues yeah. and all sorts of things. I am happy you brought this point up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because yesterday I did a radio interview on RGR, and the question was raised, is this targeted towards women? And no. What we need to recognize is that it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. Fertility is an issue of a couple, a male and a female, mm -hmm. right? Or you might be using donor eggs. It's still boils down that is the woman that's going to carry the child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing is that in infertile relationships, in up to 50% of cases, the males mm -hmm. have a problem. Which, yes. is, which is why I really want to ask, what are some of the factors that are, are causing men? Is, uh, are there lifestyle factors? Is it maybe increased 
drinking, drinking smoking weed, drug abuse smoking, yes. um you know um i don't know the, the clothes that them wear too tight mm -hmm. i don't know are there are there factors that we are are attributing to men um, being infertile being infertile or reducing the quality mm -hmm. of their 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 products um that is very correct no predominant is lifestyle factors mm -hmm. right mm. so for men there is a recent study that showed that there's a in the last 10 years there's a further 50 percent decline in mm. male semen parameters wow no wow. for a man wow. to be able to procreate or to conceive naturally mm -hmm. needs of at least 15 million sperms mm -hmm. so if you fall below that mm. you have a problem smoking both cigarettes and marijuana is very dangerous mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. sperm production mm -hmm. right um, alcohol to a lesser extent but it also contributes right mm -hmm. but there are other use of recreational drugs, drugs yeah. mm -hmm. right um, obesity which money. is a problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right diabetes yes, other potential mm -hmm. other and issues, untreated right? as well yeah right? and then we have to be mindful of the fact that we are at the top of the food chain yes and therefore what we consume sometimes have deleterious consequences mm. right. so you're killing right. your swimmers all right mm -hmm. you know killing them not to hit against chronics or anything but there was this argument about steam fish and okra mm -hmm. and one of the things that i found from research is that the okra seeds mm -hmm. is actually very toxic to sperms yeah and retarded. it's irreversibly toxic mm -hmm. there's a toxin called gossipal in the okra seeds that can Say it loud on a dark man, not put him oh, out of ground. Dark. Just to say it. <laughs> yes, no, but you see, I'm not trying to kill the okra <laughs> farmers <laughs> like this. <laughs> You're trying to be very careful. No, we can eat okra for all things. I have had my fear share of okra when I have three kids. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like okra too. I have one. That's it. <laughs> but just to say that there is evidence careful, yeah. to say you know, that the seeds from okra could yeah. be toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So again, we have to be careful. And then, you know, the water that we drink, we have to look and see. Because what happens is that there are estrogen mimicking chemicals in the environment yes. mm. that cause the demasculinization mm. of the modern man. Oh, mm. wow. Right? And it's in everything industrial exhaust, even the plastic that you use for sarin wrap yeah. has phthalates in it. And these things actually bioaccumulate in the body. Yeah. and have negative impacts on the ability to... So don't talk right. to us so about the round table tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Yes. So Where is it going to be held? It's going to be held at the uh, regional headquarters of the University of the West Indies in mm -hmm. the Nigel Harris Conference Room. Yes. It starts at 10 a.m. We have a power stakeholder consultation. Mm -hmm. We have Miss Kitty here, mm -hmm. who is going to be part of the panelists. Mm -hmm. So let's big, big her up. <laughs> yeah, right? Thank you, Doc. We and have she can talk about fertility. <laughs> right? We have people from the Planning Institute, Mr. Easton Williams. Oh, Because yeah. I think that if we are thinking about the population, mm -hmm. we need to have people who monitor but these he, things. He was head of the population right. unit for a very long time. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have our very known epidemiologist, Dr. Professor McCorbin Bins. We have our psychologist, sexologist, Professor Karin Carpenter. Mm -hmm. We have two consultants, two specialists, Dr. Loxley Christie from the Hugh Winter Institute for Reproductive Health and Endoscopic Surgery, and Dr. Gart McDonald, who is the SMO for Victoria Jubilee really? Hospital. Yes. And we have um, the permanent secretary from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Mr. Dunstan Brand. Nice. As well as a former permanent secretary, uh, Mr. Reginald Budan. He okay. used to be with me. Um, yes, yes, yes. Ministry yes, of yes. Investment, Industry Sorry, and Commerce. Doc, is it going to be online? Can person Zoom? Yes. Okay. And I'll give you the social media, media handlers. Um, we have, um, well, you can log on through the um, IVF Jamaica website, or there is the um, Facebook, www.facebook.com slash IVF Jamaica, or you can through Instagram, HW Fertility. All right. And All so right. you can log in. And there's also face to face, so we are, if you register and you want to come face to face, we are accommodating 150. Um, persons. persons in okay. the audience right. because we want Jamaica and, and if even if you're joining us remotely we're asking that you send your questions in mm -hmm. so that the panelists because this is not just us we're here, we're here to raise awareness to the Jamaican population as to the implications of being below 
replacement fertility levels. But the stakeholder consultation is also looking for solutions. Yeah. And we need to understand the needs. Just outside, I had a patient, a uh, young lady said to me, but doc, we can't afford to have babies. You know how much a baby costs? You buy pampers, you know how much this thing costs? And I said, well, yes, we need to look at what are the challenges, Yes. right? Mm -hmm. Um, issues with daycare support services, mm -hmm. after care, because we work, you see what we have to recognize is that we are engaging more women in the workforce and it's very difficult to maintain a work-life balance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Plus the cultural and social norms, there's a change now to basically personal freedom, leisure, self-fulfillment. Don't give them too much, don't give them too much, don't give them too much. Yeah. 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 So, so when you come, tomorrow. they have to come You'll tomorrow. You'll hear all these things. Yes, they have to come discussion. tomorrow. Good. But I love Good. the initiative. It mm -hmm. is definitely topical, and it's something that we have to pay attention to. So to you, Doc, and your yes. team, uh, thank you so very much. Dr. John Harriot, director yeah. of the at the Hugh Winter Institute for Reproductive Health Care and Endoscopic Surgery at the UWI. Law and Order is up next. So we'll find out how to keep your deals in tip top shape, dot mm. every I and cross every T right, right after the break. <laughs>